Hi everyone, the Lord be with you and also with you. I was busy the last couple of weeks with services and sermons and things, but this week has been much quieter. And I thank the Lord that we can have this contrast between busy and quiet times. But it's also important that we find a quiet time each day just to be with the Lord in meditation and prayer. And so it's my prayer that these midday prayers give you the space to join in every day and at any time and focus on God. And I'd like to start today by praising God, which is always the best place to start. Today's psalm is Psalm 103, verses 1 to 2 and 19 to 22. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Thanks be to God. Sorry, I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Today's Gospel reading comes from the end of John's Gospel. It's that beautiful passage in which Jesus reinstates Peter. And so let's listen to the good news proclaimed in John's Gospel, chapter 21, reading verses 15 to 19. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. There is so much in this passage that speaks to me and I'm sure to you too. There's love, there's understanding and forgiveness. There's the command to follow and so much more besides. Jesus starts by asking Peter, do you love me more than these? It may be that he indicated the nets, the boat, the fish, that Peter, or rather was Peter, prepared to give up his livelihood as a fisherman, the way of life that he knew so well, to follow Jesus and become an evangelist and spend his time caring for others. And that question becomes a question for each of us too. How much are we prepared to give up to follow Jesus? Is there anything we love more than Jesus? Perhaps our comfort 
our happiness, our family. Or it may be that Jesus was referring to the other disciples who were here with them. In this way, he would have been reminding Peter of his words at the Last Supper, even if all fail and fall away on account of you. I never will. Those words do so speak of overconfidence and reliance on self, don't they? And it didn't take long for Peter to fail on his promise. And that resonates with me as well. I also come before Jesus as a sinner. And it's not always easy to accept forgiveness or to really believe that you are forgiven. Peter was eventually able to come to that place and be the rock for the church that Jesus had said he would be. We can contrast Peter with Judas. After his betrayal of Jesus, Judas was overcome with remorse. But although he had heard the teachings of Jesus about forgiveness, he could not believe that he would be forgiven. And so he committed suicide. Is this an issue for us? Do we focus on our sinfulness? Or can we accept that Jesus loves us despite our failures? I know someone who believes that they're too bad to be ever accepted as a good Christian. They're not a criminal or anything like that, just an ordinary person who has weaknesses. It's a burden for them. And it's so unnecessary. We all need to believe in repentance and restoration which is what we see in this story. Jesus asks the question, do you love me? Three times, echoing Peter's threefold denial of him. But he's not focusing on betrayal, but on love. He does not condemn Peter for what he's done, but asks him about his capacity for love. Are we able to understand others, knowing that they may hurt us as we may hurt them? That all of us are frail and frequently fail? Do we look for the good in people rather than the bad? And finally, Jesus says to Peter, follow me. If we truly love Jesus, then we will want to follow him. What each one of us is called to do as we follow Jesus may be different, but it is absolutely sure to include, take care of my sheep. Looking after others, looking out for others is an essential component of our Christian life. And so we need to reflect on how we are reaching out to others. Could we be doing more? There's lots to think about in this passage. So spend time with God praying about these things. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us despite our failures. Thank you that because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we are forgiven sinners and that we can go out in the name of Jesus to follow him. Help us to forgive others who have hurt us. Show us the way that each of us can be like a shepherd to others, how we can make the lives of others better. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. And we share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. We pray the prayer for Africa. God, bless Africa. Protect our women and children. Transform our leaders. Heal our communities. Restore our dignity. And give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go well, everybody. Keep safe. Goodbye.